Let's talk about ischiofemoral impingement and what it really means for you and your hips. I'm Matt Shu from Upright Health where we help you think right, move right, and feel right. In this video, you're gonna see an excerpt from a workshop that we did with professionals who work with people with hips. We talk about the invention of the ischiofemoral impingement diagnosis how surgeons have created it and why they think that their diagnosis makes sense. And we look at what really matters when you're thinking about ischiofemoral impingement and how you can solve your hip pain yourself. If you're new here, be sure to check out the description box for helpful links. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. I think it is important to touch on this because you guys are going to start hearing about it more and more. Ischiofemoral impingement is the latest hip diagnosis that's starting to gain steam. I've noticed it come up more and more on people's intake forms. Just so you understand the, the basic premise, the basic premise is they're saying a bone, a little piece of bone here, and then your pelvic bone uh, just happened to go too close together. And in order to fix that, surgically you would shave down one of those bones. Sometimes there is some literature that actually goes against that and says, hey, maybe we should just stretch. Um, but the diagnosis itself is gaining steam. And just so you know the history of it, it's basically a diagnosis that was born out of one surgeon's case study. He did a hip replacement on somebody. Person still had hip pain. So the surgeon said, well, I think it's because of this. I'm gonna shave this down. And then he says it worked. Of course, we don't know, but he says it worked and got rid of the pain. So that's the groundwork. And then since then, there's just been more case studies by more surgeons saying, oh, I had somebody with hip pain. I cut down this bone. I'm pretty sure it worked. That's the same way FAI started, um, that diagnosis. That's how shoulder impingement diagnoses have started. So ischiofemoral impingement is starting to gain steam, yeah. It's similar to like a cam impingement on a hip. Like a, they told me when I, the reason I was born, they said I was born with like a baby bone growth. And it was like a- Can you grab the skeleton? They called it a cam impingement, which was like, they said it was on the femoral head and what was happening was it was slowly, as I would move, it was just like scraping my labor away. It's the same kind of- Same kind of idea. De descriptive idea of like, oh, your bone is misshapen and it's been that way forever, but we don't know why it only now is suddenly a problem. With the cam impingement, um, they're talking about there's too much bone here, right? They're just saying like, oh, there's so much bone and it just, it just runs into it prematurely and that's why it hurts, except that doesn't make sense because you're like, the, the descriptors make no sense, right? You should have trouble coming out this way, but people get trouble coming this way and they say, oh, that's, that's. FAI, they, they claim there are two types. Uh, there's, there's basically overgrowth on the head and overgrowth on the acetabular rim. And, and then sometimes you get both. I want you to look at this very closely because that the FAI one is at least more, somewhat more plausible. This one is, they're talking about this bone on your femur, this little piece coming off here, and this one right here. They're shaving this part of the femur, the lesser trochanter. You think about the measurement metric, the measurements they're using to determine that these are too close. Okay, you know how you can make these two farther apart? Yeah, I could just do that. So it's, it's really important to see that, right? Because if, these, if the muscle groups around the hip are not doing their jobs correctly, you could live if I just exaggerate it, I, I could be like this all the time, right? I could actually have my femur just adducted too much all the time. That's possible. It probably still wouldn't hit there, but I could be in that position a lot. It could hurt, but that doesn't mean that the bones are causing that. And if these bones, even if they were running together, shaving this bone would only give me a few more millimeters of space. So just getting that functionality, getting the ability to abduct and exist with a little more abduction is gonna be way more helpful, way less invasive, and just more successful as a strategy for your daily life. But that's gonna be one you're gonna be hearing a lot about over time, because 
I, I'm seeing more and more papers start coming out about ischiofemoral impingement. Be prepared. It's coming. Winter is coming. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found it informative and that it's changed your perspective on what ischiofemoral impingement really means. If you are looking for ideas to help you move your hips better, be sure to check out the description box for helpful links. And if you like the video, click the like button and share it with one person that you know needs to see this. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos from Upright Health, be sure to click the subscribe button and click the bell icon to receive notifications for our new content. As always, I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't.